You've all heard of space elevators, right? The magical transportation system that will take you into orbit and it will reduce the cost of space travel to almost nothing. Yeah, those. And I'm sure most of you have seen plenty of videos describing these machines, but I'm going to give you a quick refresher anyway. This is a space elevator. Okay, that's it. I'm sure those videos you watched covered it in plenty of detail, so there's not really any need to do it here. I'm sure those videos also mentioned some potential problems with the space elevator design, and they said they could be fixed by carbon nanotubes. Well, they were wrong. There's one fatal flaw in the space elevator design, and there is no material that will ever be able to overcome it. It's one of the dangers that spacecraft already face, only it's going to be much worse if we try to build some carbon nanotube tethered to geostationary orbit. It's space junk. The entire design of the space elevator requires that it is built on the equatorial plane. If you've learned much about orbits, or you even play Kerbal Space Program, you probably see where the problem is. Every orbit will at some point cross the equatorial plane. In fact, this is true for any plane that you draw through the center of a body that is being orbited. That means that every single satellite, spacecraft, or piece of debris between here and geostationary orbit has the potential to hit our beloved space elevator. And this is isn't just little bits of rock. These are full-size satellites, rocket stages, and even space stations. I don't care how strong carbon nanotubes are, they're not going to survive the ISS smashing into them at nearly 5 miles per second. And even if the elevator was made of something that could survive this, what would happen to the space station? It would be obliterated, cut in two by this tiny, thin cable flying through space at ridiculous speed. Now, this wouldn't necessarily happen to the ISS, because it's being maneuvered constantly to avoid collisions but there are still 21,000 other objects that are being tracked by NASA, and those are only the ones that are larger than 10 centimeters. There's an estimated 500,000 pieces of debris that are smaller than that. These may be small, but they'd still be sandblasting the space elevator constantly. Ultimately, even if the space elevator could survive the speeding, it would just become a massive cosmic blender for space junk. This would make the existing problem much worse, and eventually Kessler syndrome would be fully realized. The Earth would be entirely surrounded with a massive cloud of metal particles, making any space travel below geostationary orbit literally impossible. This means that the Earth would effectively become a prison with only one way in or out, the space elevator. Other nations would not be able to launch their own spacecraft or even build another space elevator. The cloud of debris would just make it too hard to lower another tether down to the surface. So basically, the best case scenario is that the elevator is destroyed and it was all a huge waste of money. And the worst case scenario is that it survives long enough to effectively doom the human race to remain trapped on Earth forever. But that's all just theory. If you have your own ideas about this, or have an idea of how we could avoid these horrible problems, feel free to comment below and subscribe to see more space related videos or videos of whatever I felt like filming. I really don't know. But anyway, I'm Con Hathi. Bye.